The Gods Must Be Crazy is a 1980 comedy film written, produced, edited, and directed by Jamie Use. An international co-production of South Africa and Botswana. It is the first film in the Gods Must Be Crazy series. Set in Southern Africa, the film stars Namibian sand farmer Enzo Toma as she, a hunter-gatherer of the Kalahari Desert, whose tribe discovers a glass bottle dropped from an airplane and believe it to be a gift from their gods. When she sets out to return the bottle to the gods, his journey becomes intertwined. With that of a biologist, played by Marius Weyers, a newly hired village school teacher, Sandra Prinsloo, and a band of guerrilla terrorists. The Gods Must Be Crazy was released by Sturt Kinnaker in South Africa, where it broke box office records, becoming the most financially successful release in the history of South Africa's film industry. The film was a commercial and critical success in other countries, including the United States where it was distributed by 20th Century Fox. With the film's original Afrikaans dialogue being dubbed in English. Despite its success, the film attracted criticism for its depiction of race and perceived ignorance of discrimination. And apartheid in South Africa. The film was followed by one official sequel, The Gods Must Be Crazy 2, released by Columbia Pictures in 1989. She and his sand tribe are living happily in the Kalahari Desert, away from industrial civilization. One day, a glass Coca-Cola bottle is thrown out of an airplane by a pilot and falls to the ground unbroken. Initially, she's people assume the bottle to be a gift. From their gods, just as they believe plants and animals are, and find many uses for it. Unlike other bounties, however, there is only one glass bottle, which causes unforeseen conflict within the tribe.
As a result, she, wearing only a loincloth, decides to make a pilgrimage to the edge of the world and dispose of the divisive object. Along the way, she encounters biologist Andrew Stein. Who is studying the manure of wildlife, Stein's assistant and mechanic, beauty, Kate Thompson, a woman who quit her job as a journalist in Johannesburg to become a village school teacher. And eventually, a band of guerrillas led by Sam Boga, who are being pursued by government troops after a failed assassination attempt. Stein is tasked with bringing Kate to the village where she will teach. But he is awkward and clumsy around her. Their Land Rover stalls while trying to ford a deep river, he hoists it out with a winch, but it continues lifting the vehicle to a very high treetop level. While a forgetful Stein is distracted extricating Kate from a briar bush. She more than once mistakes his attempts to evade wild animals and putting out an evening campfire as advances towards her. Eventually, a snobbish safari tour guide named Jack Hind arrives and takes Kate the rest of the way to the village. One day, she happens upon a herd of goats and shoots one with a tranquilizer arrow, planning to eat it. He is arrested and sentenced to jail. Beauty, who once lived with the San and can speak the San language, is discontent with the verdict. He and Stein arrange to hire she as a tracker for the remainder of his sentence in lieu of prison time, and teach she how to drive Stein's Land Rover. Meanwhile, the guerrillas invade Kate's school, taking her and the students as hostages. As they make their escape to a neighboring country, Stein, Beauty, and she, immersed in their fieldwork, find that they are along the terrorists' and children's path, and observe their movements.
with a telescope. They managed to immobilize six of the eight gorillas using makeshift tranquilizer darts launched by Xi with a miniature bow, allowing Kate and the children to confiscate the gorillas' firearms. Stein and Pewty apprehend the remaining two gorillas by frightening one with a snake and by shooting at a tree above the other, causing latex to drip from the tree and irritate his skin. Jackhind arrives and takes away Kate, taking credit for the rescue that Stein, Pewty, and she had actually planned and executed. Later, with she's term over, Stein pays his wages. And sends him on his way. She has never seen paper money, banknotes, before, and throws them on the ground. Stein and Pewty then drive from their camp to visit Kate. Stein attempts to explain to Kate his tendency to be uncoordinated in her presence, but accidentally and repeatedly knocks over a number of objects in the process. Kate finds his efforts endearing and kisses Stein. She eventually arrives at God's window, the top of a cliff with a solid layer of low-lying clouds obscuring the landscape below. Convinced that he has reached the edge of the world, he throws the bottle off the cliff and returns to his family.